so I, I, I say that um, as a public health commissioner, and I'll talk in a minute about some of the ways that we've worked in partnership with council and its members, but I also want to say it as a consumer. And so I'll, I'll tell you um, two stories um, that uh, relate to why I uh, personally value the work of council. The, the first one involves uh, my father, who 20 years ago had uh, surgery uh, for a gallbladder, kind of relatively minor surgery, uh, and uh, then was in um, a coma for six weeks because it was found out later uh, a sponge had been left uh, inside after the operation. And, you know, I remember at the time, 20 years ago, you know, sort of we found that out, and he slowly recovered, and, and but we didn't, we actually didn't think you could do anything. You know, we just thought you could, you know, hope you weren't going to get unlucky the next time, or, you know, or, or maybe you, your goal was just stay out of the hospital no matter what, because you couldn't, you know, you couldn't count on anything. And really, 20 years ago, there wasn't an advocacy movement around uh, healthcare quality and safety, and it would didn't know as a family member, we didn't think we had any where to turn. So I, I would say since um, being a uh, health commissioner in the state in particular, and since working with uh, uh, the, and seeing the work of the council and knowing people like Lucilia, uh, I, I try to channel uh, that energy and um, uh, knowledge through uh, information on <coughs> uh, the certification website, for example. So now, uh, my mother, I have a mother who's 99 years old, wow. and um, she uh, really, her, her goal in life is to be left alone. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't care what happens to her, she does not want to go to a hospital or be seen by a doctor, but of course she lives in assisted living, so you know, every six months, they, you know, something happens, she falls down or she brushes against something and cuts herself, and so the ambulance gets called against her wishes and uh, she gets carted off to the emergency department. And every time I'm involved in uh, channeling to council in terms of uh, <laughs> arguing with the emergency department, no, we do not want that invasive procedure, no, we do not want those unnecessary tests, no, you know, uh, just put a Band-Aid on it, put her back <laughs> in the ambulance, send her back to her bed. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, I, you know I, I'm the health commissioner, right? <laughs> I get nowhere in terms of this, if I say, I've tried saying things like, but you know, I'm in public health, I actually know something about this, nothing, right? nothing. The only thing that gets me anywhere is to be an assertive patient, uh, advocate. Uh, so I can, you know, uh, I basically, you know, know what her rights are, what my rights are. I, you know, I, I always say I want to speak to the ombudsman or who, who can I speak to in the hospital? I don't want to speak to the resident who's caring for the person who's trying the best. I want to speak to somebody who will just stop the care right now if it's inappropriate. And so I would say on a personal level, thank you also to the council because I think I'm not alone. I think there are people all across the Commonwealth who have learned from and been inspired by your work so that within their own families and their own, you know, friends and they're able to um, uh, speak up and advocate. And I think also because you've created an environment in Massachusetts where um, people know that there are, uh, there is an active uh, advocacy and uh, patient rights and family rights um, community. You know, there's greater awareness. It, it is not, I don't think it's adversarial. I just think that it's been like a, a, a consciousness raising process for the um, hospitals and nursing homes and health centers to really learn, you know, this is good. It's, it's good to promote the highest level quality uh, of care and uh, this is helpful. This is essentially the right thing to do. So, uh, thank you for that. You know, it, it, when I picked up my individual consumer uh, patient advocate hat, I would speak on behalf of the Department of Public Health to say, you know, thank you to the council. Um, the council existed before I was uh, the commissioner, so I was very lucky. I came in, you know, four years ago, and uh, right away heard about the council work. And I think I, I think in my first few months, I came to a meeting uh, and you know saw the work that was going on and heard about it. And uh, I feel like it's been a terrific partnership for us, and that we've really seen uh, in the ways that policy can change and legislation can change. Thank you very much, Representative, for your leadership and making sure that things actually have to happen because the legislature provides leadership and you provide leadership. I've had the great pleasure of working alongside of uh, 
uh, Lucilia Fritz Ramos, who has been an inspiration um, in terms of her uh, work on the um, Public Health Council, the Public Health Council set policy in Massachusetts. A and by the way, um, I, I believe that um, the reason that Lucilia is on the Public Health Council is in part because the council existed, the, uh, the uh, health quality, the Consumer Health Quality Council, that is. Uh, because when the Public Health Council rules were rewritten, and the old council rules with like eight members were thrown out, you know, specific criteria, there was, and the new council was created, there was a consumer uh, advocacy position that was specifically designated with health care for all being the organization that would identify that person. That's the seat that Lucilia holds, and she has ensured that as we look across the board in terms of you know anything, any policy issue, you know we have a uh, a, a remarkable uh, leader and outspoken um, person uh, in in Lucilia. So thank you for Lucilia. For the work. And I've had I, I've benefited from hearing Lucilia tell her courageously tell her story about her father, and that I think has moved uh, many people in the legislature as well as uh, in the state government and, and around the state. And I know that other members of the council have done the same thing. Thank you for um, your help in terms of the passage of the legislation, the implementation of the legislation. You know, the representative mentioned this, but it's the hospital-associated infection regulations that came from the legislation. It's the serious reportable events now legislation. That also means that uh, greater attention is being paid to things like falls in the hospitals or ulcers in the hospital from lying in bed too long. So they, this is really making a difference in terms of uh, saving people's lives and uh, preventing unnecessary uh, injuries and um, conditions. Um, uh, other ways that we've worked closely together and appreciated the council is through the work of the Betsy Lehman Center and Tracy Gay is here who's provided leadership there. And the council really helped to ensure there too that it was helping to uh, inform the focus of the Betsy Lehman Center on things like studying these issues. How much does it cost the Commonwealth, for example, when hospital associated infections occur? The answer there is $400 million a year. So it becomes clear if we want to focus on reducing health care costs, why don't we focus on an area where reducing the costs will also improve health care quality. That's a great place to start, and I think that real progress has been made in that regard. And then we've just, um, I think, again, with your leadership, look for other places where we can make improvements, uh, providing greater information to uh, patients and their families in nursing homes, for example. There's a, a mandate, a legislatively mandated a brochure, which we've just done and made a, a big difference already, I think, in terms of nursing home operations. Um, and making sure that our inspectors, uh, the nurses and, and others that go into the uh, hospitals and nursing homes, really are informed, are consumer informed, and not just government regulators, but they really try to now, we're increasingly trying to train people to go into those facilities with the lens of what is the experience like for the patient, and that's the so all that is why I thank, thank you. Uh, five years of just outstanding work and, and dedicated hard work by council members. And, and so it's my pleasure um, to not only be able to thank you, but also to uh, uh, present uh, certificates of recognition to the members of the council who have advanced this work by telling their own story, by willing to come to policy meetings, by working closely with the legislature, and by helping us with the Department of Public Health. So we're going to present these, and we're going to do it in first by um, recognizing the um, uh, some of the uh, founding and original members of the council. Um, and the first honoree, I think, very appropriately, is Lucilia Prates. So in addition to the things that I've already mentioned about Lucilia, Lucilia was actually. The, I, I think I would say the founding member, or the person who yeah. came up with the idea of the council together with John McDonough, who's back there. John, thank you for your leadership on this, and just, you know, I think without you, the council wouldn't have existed, so thank you for your, your great leadership on this. So, I'm going to read this to you now. It's to Lucilia Prates. Thank you for your work in starting the Consumer Health Quality Council, your leadership as president, and your courage to tell your story and make a difference in health care in Massachusetts. 
Thank you. that I, I, this really was not my original um, idea. It, I, it was really John's. I called John and I said to John, this is happening to my father. People need a place to turn to. And John said, let's talk. Um, so I can't take credit for that. <laughs> um, but I was one of the driving forces and that I accept uh, recognition for. So thank you very much, everybody. The next person we want to recognize is Linda Burgess. Linda. Thank you for your early and ongoing involvement in the Consumer Health Quality Council, your leadership as vice president, and your work with the uh, Patient Family Advisory Council. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your early and ongoing involvement in the Consumer Health Quality Council. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, Ken Farbstein. And thank you for your early and ongoing involvement in the Consumer Health Quality Council, your leadership as president, and your work with the Rapid Response Methods and PFAC work groups. Thank you. Next, Ginny Harvey. Ginny, thank you for your involvement in the Consumer Health Quality Council and your courage to tell your story and make a difference in healthcare in Massachusetts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Linda Klein. Linda, thank you for your early and ongoing involvement in the Consumer Health Quality Council and your courage to tell your story and make a difference in healthcare in Massachusetts. Thank you. Lisa Nash. Lisa, thank you for your early and ongoing involvement in the Consumer Health Quality Council and your courage to tell your story and make a difference in health care. <laughs> Joe Prates. Joe, thank you for your involvement in the Consumer Health Quality Council, your courage to tell your story and make a difference in health care in Massachusetts and your system. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and uh, there are also a few of those original members who couldn't be today, but we also want to recognize them, so I'm going to uh, say their names, and they'll get plaques too, they just couldn't be here today, and they include Dory Pellick, Elis Elizabeth Pell, and Jen Tosca, so let's all thank them. For their <laughs> now we have uh, certificates for other members of the council who joined uh, later and have contributed significantly to the work. And we're going to start with Robina Reed. Robina, thank you for the courage to tell your story and make a difference in healthcare in Massachusetts. Thanks, so thank you very much. <laughs> Nicola Truppen, thank you for your leadership as president of the Consumer Health Quality Council and your work with the Patient Family Advisory Council work group and the and on the assertive patient website. Thank you. <laughs> Alex Ziss, thank you for the time and effort you contributed to the work of the Consumer Health Quality Council, especially the Rapid Response, PFAC, and Public Reporting work groups. Thank you. And then um, we also want to thank some of the uh, other members who uh, couldn't make it today, and they include Sue Yoon. And I think I'm just want to check whether I think Sue may be 
Oh, no, and also John, um, John McCormick as well. So please, uh, let's have a round of uh, applause. For the two. Um, so again, uh, thank you to the council. The Department of Public Health really looks forward to continuing to work closely in partnership with you.